Hello everyone, Callum here from FSLE and today I'm going to talk to you all about the Microsoft Flight Simulator user interface. So we've seen numerous videos over the past couple of months highlighting various aspects of the simulator including of course different aircraft, different scenery and also the online multiplayer components. However, something we know that the community are very keen to see is exactly how the user interface will be when they launch the simulator. So stay tuned for the rest of this video and we'll take you through everything that they have showed off so far in our Microsoft Flight Simulator UI Overlook video. Now before I begin, I just want to remind you that we are currently selling our FS Elite magazine issue number three. Issue number three will feature everything you need to know about Microsoft's upcoming flight simulator, including the included default aircraft, scenery, and also third party developers who have confirmed they are developing add-on scenery, aircraft, and more for the upcoming Microsoft flight simulator. If you're watching this video, then great news, we do have a 20% discount code. All you need to do is put in the code MSFS and that will then take off 20% off of the magazine and then we will start shipping that out to you. Now back to the video. So this appears to be the brand new Microsoft Flight Simulator user interface when you first load up the flight sim. So there are various options here and we're going to go through all of them in a little bit of detail and we can start to discover exactly how you can use the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. So starting up in the top left, we obviously are on the welcome tab, which does seem to indicate that this will be the screen that you'll be welcome to upon loading the flight simulator. Next to that, we have profile, which we can only imagine is to do with your account details, maybe things to do with like your username um, and other information that will be stored within the flight simulator itself. Now, marketplace does appear to be there, but it isn't actually clickable from what we can see on this screen here. Now, there is obviously speculation that this marketplace will be where third party developers can sell their add ons such as aircraft, scenery, utilities for weather, camera add ons, etc. Whatever that they may develop. And that could be the place where people download and purchase them from. That isn't to say that third parties will be restricted to this marketplace only, as it has been said in the past that third parties will be able to sell their products outside of this particular ecosystem. However, it will be quite nice to have it all in one place and all easily manageable. Moving alongside, we then have the options. Now, again, we don't have any clear indication of exactly what options will be available. We imagine things such as setting your graphics settings, your sound settings, your control options, and all of the other things that you would require for a flight simulator to do, they'll probably be found in that section there. Now, moving along to the right a little bit further, we do see numerous icons and all of that seems to relate to things such as the multiplayer components, the user notification things as well, and also what appears to be blurred out should be something to do with a username. But of course, we can't tell that information based on this information here. However, we will cover some of the multiplayer components very shortly. Now moving on down, we do have on the left the world map. Now this is obviously a very big part of the new Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to go into a little bit more depth of that one very soon. Moving along, we have what appears to be some kind of live event. Now we have heard in the past that Microsoft will be doing live events and challenges for the community and this appears to be the place where people can click it. From our experience during the Xbox uh, live event back in November 2019, clicking this took you straight into that particular scenario with everything loaded up. Now in the bottom left hand corner we have flight training, so this is learning how to fly the Cessna 152 in this particular instance. And again, probably similar to the live events, this will change on a periodic basis depending on what Microsoft want to do or even promote through their ecosystem. Activities follows up, so finding your next challenge, again, not exactly sure exactly what this will entail, however, if those who are looking for something different to try in the new Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is most likely where you'll be able to find it. And then finally, news. This looks to be where Microsoft will unveil any upcoming news or information related to the simulator in this particular section here. Now down at the bottom we have a reset build which we imagine just resets everything to factory settings and then also quit to desktop using the escape key. 
that about wraps everything up for the main user interface. However, let's now discuss a little bit more to do with the map itself. Here we have an entire representation of the world itself in a globe format and from this video you can spin it around and manipulate it exactly however you choose to do so. But before we go into a little bit more detail let's just have a look at some of the information found on this user interface. So in the top left we can see that the aircraft chosen is the Airbus A320neo and probably clicking that will allow you to change the aircraft depending on what you would like. Following on that we have from, so we can select the departure airport and also the runway and then also our arrival airport and runway as well. We imagine the little button in the middle allows you to swap that depending on what you want to do. Flight conditions on the other side of the screen would represent things such as weather and time of day. And then down at the bottom, we also have the ability to change the time as well. So it doesn't mean you have to fly in real world time. Now in the top left as well, just underneath where we spoke about the aircraft, there is a search bar. In previous videos, we have seen people being able to search ICAO codes, search airports, destinations, and also points of interest, which is something I particularly liked and I spoke about during my event trip to Seattle last September. Then in the very bottom right hand corner, you have the fly button, which once all the options have been selected, you can then go ahead and fly. So with that overview done, let's just zoom in a little bit further and see exactly how much detail this map really goes into. So as we can see here, there are various little points selected all around the map, including lots of information surrounding the airport too. Now a lot of this information could be things such as NDBs, VORs, and also the airports themselves. Again, from my experience when I flew this simulator back at the Seattle event in September last year, you could even go right into the detail about different specifics for parking gates and also runway assignments as well. We can also see on this map other aircraft in the sky within the vicinity and this is both multiplayer and also the injected traffic. Now if we come back out of the zoomed in view we can see Microsoft has showed us some information about some of the filter settings as well. So we can change things such as the points of interest, so landmarks, cities, and also the navigation things as well it's for airspaces, nav aids, and also position reports as well. This enables you to really go into detail about exactly what you want to appear on the map or reduce it to a bare minimum map as well, entirely down to you. Now, moving back on to how the world map can also be integrated with a lot of the data that Microsoft will be supplying with the new flight simulator, we can see here that the flight data will also start to mimic real world air traffic data as well. And we can see on this map here, those aircraft moving in real time. Obviously this is probably sped up. I don't imagine aircraft do travel that fast. So speaking of multiplayer, let's have a look at the UI Microsoft shared with us for how you can set up your flights, whether you are flying with friends, on your own, or with other players around the world. So uh, the top section is pretty much what we had previously in the world map page, so departure, arrival airports. However, going down, we have some multiplayer specific functionality. So as they have mentioned in previous videos, you can fly online all the time with players from all over the world in any situation, and you just need to select the live players function. You can also choose all players and also off. So if you just want to fly with a group of friends and then moving down, you can then set whether you have live traffic, AI traffic or completely off as well. And then the same for the weather. So you can fly with live weather, preset weather or even custom weather. When it comes to custom weather, Microsoft did share some of that user interface as well and you can select from a range of different presets and then also you can adjust things right down to where clouds are in the sky at certain heights, the type of clouds and also things such as the snow depth, the aerosol density, precipitation and also how much lightning is in the sky as well if you're really looking for some of those challenging flights. So continuing on with multiplayer, uh, we did mention earlier on the right hand side there was a selection of boxes and they were all to do with groups and also your user notification settings as well. And Microsoft has taken us through that previously about how you can set up flights, join friends and also accept invitations to join other people whilst flying as well. And again, you can find them all on the world map, you can zoom in and then you literally set them as the departure 
select fly and then off you go flying with your friends in all sorts of crazy cool and exciting ways in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And of course you can also set things such as which server you want to connect to but Microsoft will always connect you to the best server depending on your location. Right, and finally, we're just going to go back to the world map and spend some time looking at things such as the runways, which I mentioned a little bit earlier on. So we can see once you zoom right in, you can select things such as the different gates and the parking. And then on the right hand side, you get a lot more detailed information about the airport itself, ranging from everything for the different runways available, along with the type of uh, surface that they are on and also frequencies for when you are contacting air traffic control. Now, one of the more exciting elements of this world map feature is the ability to be able to plot a VFR or IFR flight from one airport to the other. So in the example shared here, we're going to be going from Seattle all the way over to Chicago. Now, the flight time is going to be three hours and 18 minutes, and we can see that here. And we have a plotted waypoints all the way through to the different airports. Now, for those of you who may not know what all these waypoints are, essentially, they are kind of like the roads of the sky. So an aircraft will travel from point to point using what they call airways. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth. However, this is a very exciting functionality because it will enable you to fly almost real world routes anytime simply by loading up the different airports you want to fly to. You will then be able to see all of those waypoints, including a detailed log page as well. And also you can do things such as removing different waypoints, setting things as the arrival or departure all along the way as well. Now, this level of detail does enable you to really plan your routes effectively with friends and others whilst flying between the airports. Finally, you can set your departure with your SIDS and also the arrival through the stars as well. Again, this is exactly how the real world pilots also do this and also their dispatch tools from their various airlines too. Now that about wraps everything up for this video. As you can see, there is still a lot more to discover about the user interface for the new Microsoft Flight Simulator, but hopefully this video has given you a slight insight into what to expect once this product releases later this year. As a reminder, you can still pick up our FS Elite magazine issue number three from our website and use the discount code MSFS to get your 20% discount right now. That's it from me for this week. Thank you very much for watching and we will speak to you again very soon and we have a lot more video content on the way. So be sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll be sure to make sure you are the first to be updated with any upcoming content for the new Microsoft Flight Simulator.